Today is your day to experience God's extravagant grace and abundant joy. This is Hope Today. We're so glad that you're with us. I'm Anna, and I'm here with Tom and Sydney. And Sydney, we have an exciting guest today. I know Anna is super excited because if you love contemporary Christian music, then you don't want to miss our upcoming conversation with Lee Capolino, who is part of the trio Point of Grace. She's going to share the inspiration behind their latest album, and you're going to hear their new single too. And I know that there's other things that God has deposited in her heart that she wants to share with you today. And Anna and Tom, I know Anna is like very excited because this yes. is a big part of like your growing up and your childhood, the music and inspired you. Yeah, that's right. I mean, where, where are my sisters and brothers from the 90s when Steady On came out by Point of Grace. And like, I just remember putting that CD in my car and jamming out or like bebopping around my kitchen. I was 20 years old. So we're excited to uh, have Point of Grace to have a little fun. And we're gonna have a music video with their, their new song, That's Turn right. Your Eyes, which is yeah. a, a redo, kind of not a redo, but a completely refashioned uh, version of uh, the old hymn, Turn Your Eyes on Jesus. Yes. It's funny, because I, when I heard that, I can hear a, a friend of mine who is still a friend singing to the Lord just extemporaneously. I'm gonna turn my eyes on Jesus, look full in his wonderful face. Yeah. And the things of earth will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. It's an old hymn that just says so much about, you know, where we need to have our focus. Yeah, that's right. There's something about old hymns. <laughs> that's right. And yeah, their new music is beautiful. So you'll have a chance a little bit later on to hear one of their new songs. That's right. And I think it's so important for us too, is just like thinking about turning our eyes. And I know right now in our world, there are so many things that are happening. We just want to encourage you today that there is nothing like fixing your face, fixing your gaze, looking up to Jesus. And so whatever you're walking through, whatever circumstance you're dealing with, there's something, you know, I just want to share with you real quick that I was in a prayer meeting over the weekend and this woman shared something with me that I've been doing that I want to encourage you and challenge you to do in the morning going through the ABCs of God so you say like Abba he's beloved Christ like going through all the letters of the alphabet and that's a way I've just been starting my day going through F from A to Z wow. and it is really it really has changed my mindset in the morning I mean it's amazing there's every letter you can go through and for God, yeah. Oh, hey, that's pretty good. Oh, yeah, yeah. I feel like we need that's to like true. post the A through Z to like. You see pick your what... own. You pick oh, whatever you pick it is. Own. Whatever it is, it's like you what just go through this. Mind? Whatever oh, comes to wow. mind. Try it. I'm wow. telling you, I've been having a great time. I'm like, oh, you are Abba. You are beloved. You are the Christ. You're my deliverer. I mean, you can go all the Very way through. Cool. Try it out. Yeah. I love that. I love right. that. We'll have to try that. Well, right now, we're going to try something else that we call stump the hosts. It's been a little while since we've done Stump the yes. Host, and uh, I know I get feedback from people who say they play along, so please play along with us. We have not seen these questions, and hopefully we know the answers. Here's the first one. What famous land did Nebuchadnezzar rule? Isn't it Babylon? Oh, yeah, I thought it was Babylon. It was Babylon. That's our final Yay. answer. Get All that right. Sprinkle, Thank that joy. You. Yeah, Babylon. <laughs> you know, I think, I guess the, the two uh, nations that uh, really gave Israel and Judah a lot of problems, Assyria and Babylon. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. So here's our second one. In which books of the Bible is the prayer called the Lord's Prayer? Which okay, so Bible? which which book of the Bible? Which so books? is and it talking about like our Father Bible? art in heaven? Uh, Matthew? Uh, well, it's in more than one. Oh, yeah, Matthew. Oh, I'm looking oh, for two, two answers. answers. Okay. Well, I'm going to say Matt. I, I'm going to guess Matthew and Luke. I was going to say Matthew and Luke. Oh, all right. I was going to say Matthew and John, but we'll go with Matthew and Luke. Matthew Woo! and Luke. Yes. Hey, all right. <laughs> Can't all get right us here. today. Right. I hope you're playing along at home. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. Here's the, the final question. Which disciple said, show us the father and it will be enough for us while talking to Jesus. I'm pretty sure this was Philip. Oh, God. You, I don't know. Are you going to contradict me? I don't no, know. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> no, I'll, that. I'll support you, Tom. They're supporting <laughs> me. We'll go with Philip. Oh, oh okay. Okay. All right. Wait, we got it. We got Is that a special music we have now? With the, will oh, we get wow. them all right? Yeah, Thanks, Larry. <laughs> Thanks, Rick. The celebrations awesome. are getting getting bigger and bigger. Oh, this is wonderful. 
what a great day. It's like sprinkling the joy all around. Well, speaking of joy for more than three decades, Point of Grace has inspired millions with their memorable melodies and heavenly harmonies. And the Grammy nominated a Dove Award winning trio recently released an album called Turn Your Eyes, which features fresh renditions of hymns and Christian contemporary music classics. Joining us today is Lee Capolino from the trio. Lee, we are so glad to have you with us today. We're thrilled to be with you all this morning. Well, it is such a joy to have you with us. And you know, Lee, before we dive into the new music project and all that God is doing through Point of Grace, can you just share a little bit of the history for those who may be new to your music? Yeah, sure. Point of Grace um, started in college. It was four girls needing a summer job. And they were all musically inclined as, as part of, you know, our the the choir of the of the university at Washita University in Arkadelphia. And so that summer they said, let's just find a few churches, a few youth camps, and really thought that that summer after it was over, that was going to be thank you and call it a day. But what happened with the four girls is we went to Estes Park in Colorado and auditioned for not, you know, it was kind of like an, a Christian American idol, if you will. And from that, um, from that audition, there was the record label Word Records and a wonderful man named John Mays. Uh, was impressed and from that point on signed a record deal and have lived in Nashville over almost 30 years. Wow. And um, we've been doing it for 30 years. So it started out with four girls. The fourth girl had her third child and lived in Arkansas and she still lives in Arkansas. And she retired. And when she retired, we went down to three. And so we've been a trio for almost 20 years now and we you know we we've just kind of like life we've gone up down four three and just um watch God continue to be faithful through the through the changes and you know, what a testimony of who he is I just love how God, he brings us through these journeys and these valleys and the mountains wherever we go and can you just tell us the point of grace what does that mean how did the name come about well, then in the very, very beginning, we were not point of grace. We were a group called Say So, Let the Redeemed of the Lord Say So. And when we won and came to Nashville, we found out that there was another group already called Say So. And so we had to go to the drawing board of finding and figuring out what our next name was. Now, I don't know if anybody out there has ever had to figure out a name of anything, whether it's the title of a book or the name of whatever it's a it's a it's a, an amazing and a very complex task and so we just put some fillers out and asked people you know we're we're, we're going to sit in this room until we figure it out because it was the 11th hour the record was coming out and the first album was coming out and we um, sat in a room and john mays had written down the phrase we as believers meet the lord at the point of his grace. And so um, there was that little tagline that just stuck. And everybody, it was just really unanimous that within the four girls that, you know what? That's kind of like, hmm, okay, I like that. And so that's how Point of Grace got its name. John, John Mays said that it came from a C.S. Lewis book, but it's so funny because Shelley the blonde, one of the other blondes in the group, she went and did some dissecting and she's never quite seen the phrase, the point of God's grace. But we we just chalk it up to that was Jesus magic for such a time as this. And yeah. here we are. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So Lee, Point of Grace has been making music now for uh, three decades. That is a long time. When I think about what we were like in the college years, which is when you got your start to where you are now, you've experienced a lot of life in between. How have you experienced God's grace and joy in the most recent years? 
Well, it's like you said, we have, you know, none of us were married at the time and we've all watched ourselves get married. We've all become mothers. Um, we recently in the last couple of years have experienced uh, our, our parent, losing a parent. And so I think what is unique about us is first of all, we're all born with sisters. None of us ever had brothers. Um, and we learn to share and we learn to share life from curling irons to disappointment. And we are all three weeks away from each other. We were all born the same year within three weeks of each other. So we all have celebrated the fifties together. <laughs> and um, but as we look back in life, I think it's just unique how God just allowed when Denise was down, Shelly and I were up. When I was up, um, they were down. And it's just been the whole ebb and flow. And we've all been, we've always said we are the sum of the parts, just like the body of Christ. We we know that we are better when we are sh helping each other sharpen. And um so the joy of life, and I'll tell you, it's we we said this, and it's not a joke. We said this just last week when we were driving together. We were saying, um, I think it was Denise. She was maybe just gotten off the phone with her husband, and she made the comment, "I can't imagine ever doing this without y'all. Y'all bring me so much joy and happiness. We have so much fun together. We're friends." We're true sisters in Christ. We love God. We love people. And we love singing about a message that matters. And I think that's what keeps the joy going. And the joy looks different. It, you know, it, it looks different, but it's always joy. And because we know where joy comes from, it's not that momentary of happiness. It's real joy. Um, but we... We, I don't want to do it without Shelly and Denise. I really don't. I won't, I don't want to do it without the tangible of who they are. And we would all agree that God has allowed us to do it together because he, he knows we, he knows the desire of our hearts. He knows we love traveling together, singing together and worshiping um, with people that want to enter in and hopefully just, you know, still encourage the body of Christ. We have never claimed to be Bible scholars or great teachers, but we, if God says be obedient, we want to be obedient. Okay. Well, what does that look like? Lord? Well, go here. I'll send you here. Okay. Well, we'll go. So as long as the phone's ringing and people want to come, point of grace will always be around. We've said that. <laughs> well, Lee, let me ask you about that. Music is such a powerful force. Uh, for worship and for praise, but also for healing. What kind of feedback do you get from people after this, this career that you've all had and, and many albums out, many people exposed to your music? What kind of things have people said to you about your music in their life? Sure. Yeah, the common denominator, whether it's going through a divorce or um, experiencing the loss of a child or the common denominator is when I picked up your CD or when I listened to your record, it it just brought me joy or it brought me peace or it brought me comfort. Um, we hear stories like that all the time and we, we're never, you know, we just, we know where that comes from. I mean, we're fully aware of where that comes from, but music is such a softening tool of the heart. And we have a song called Directions Home that we the way we recorded a few years ago. And, and again, the irony of when we record these songs, a lot of the people don't know, we, ch we choose them, the, the songs that we choose a lot of times because we're going through that situation and it ministered to us. And so we've, we have said that one of the assets of Point of Grace is we're not big songwriters but we choose songs from great songwriters that are the meat and potatoes of somebody's, the depth of somebody's um, life. And, and oftentimes we're just, we're all experiencing life. Very, you know, we're, we all experience disappointment. We all experience joy. We all experience, 
but what season will it hit you? What season will it hit me? And through the years, it never fails that our music is a softening tool for God to just begin to work, you know, and, and, it, it, and, and that's the thing about music. It doesn't necessarily change the circumstance, but it softens your heart to maybe hear his voice of, of reassurance. Well, yeah, I love what you say. It's just like music, it softens the heart because I think so many of us, we can attest to that while we're listening to a song, we're going through a valley, we're going through a storm and God will use that to break up the things in our heart and bring us to a place of healing. And can you talk to us about the inspiration behind your new project, Turn Your Eyes? Well, we, um, we finally sat in a studio room with our favorite singer songwriter. Her name is Cindy Morgan. And it was a dream of, a dream of ours for years to work with Cindy because she was all that. She was just, she's amazing. And she was a Christian CCM artist. She came up the ranks during the nineties with us and phenomenal and still is a phenomenal artist. And she, we've often said that she reads our mail. And what that means is, is she gets who we are and she understands the seasons of life and she understands Point of Grace's legacy. So when it was time for us to sit and figure out, okay, what do we want this record to be? We wanted it to be where we walk, where we are. And for us, we wanted some of the new, some of the old, some of the borrowed, some of the blue. We wanted hymns that we that are foundational for us, that, that, that are those musical base, that basic equipment musically that um, we grew up listening to. Um, and then we wanted what is what's been happening in the church recently. We wanted some worship. We wanted that praise and worship. And then we wanted to still put that original piece that Point of Grace is known for. And we wrote a song called At the Table. And so it's it's very eclectic, which is what we are right now musically. We listen to a little bit of everything. And because we are more than just one type of music, you know. And so this record when we sat down and just tried to figure out, well, what, what, where, where do we want, what, what message do we want to say in the title that kind of encompasses? And it was that beautiful hymn, Turn Your Eyes. Um, like I said earlier, we have lived a lot of life. We're still young enough that we can appreciate, um, like I've got a 10 year old, so I'm still on the baseball field. But yet we're old enough that we're watching our kids find their spouse and figure out their occupation. And again, watching our parents grow older. And so it was that message of we're not careful. Everything around us is just going to be so chaotic. But if we protect and keep our eyes channeled upward, the rest of the world, it will fall into place. And pass that story down, pass that story down to our audience and to our kids and to those that we have influence around our neighborhood. And because life will be tough sometimes. And am I going to look down or am I going to look up? For me, I choose to look up because that has brought me the most comfort. I love that so much. It's so important. We have to make that choice every day. What you're saying is, are we going to look down? Are we going to look up and fix our eyes on our creator? Thank you so much for sharing your heart with us today. It's been an absolute joy. Love being with you. And right now we're going to take a look at Point of Grace's new music video, Turn Your Eyes. Take a look.
Turn your eyes on Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. We have a scripture that mentions who really created us. This is the Proverbs 20, 12. The Lord has made both these things, ears to hear and eyes to see. Now we both, we know there, there are blessings to be able to see and hear. We know that that those are things that God has given us these senses to experience things, but we experience way too many things that are not godly through our eyes and ears or that are not the way God would want the, the world to be. You know, we live in a world that's fallen and we hear things and see things that are not encouraging and not uh, what God would have us or God would have the world be. But when we turn those eyes and ears on His glory, on his voice, we hear a different thing. Anna, how's this verse and how's what we've been talking about speak to you? Right, well, as Tom said, we all know it's a blessing just to have the physical senses of being able to see and being able to hear. But for those of us who believe in Christ and who have the Holy Spirit working in us, how blessed we are to be able to have spiritual eyes and spiritual ears. So no matter what the world looks like around us, no matter what we're seeing, no matter what we're hearing, we can fix our eyes on Jesus. We can see with his eyes what he sees. We can grasp his vision for our lives and for the circumstances that we're going through. And then when we use our spiritual ears and we listen 
for his still small voice. How blessed we are to be strengthened by the grace and the joy and the peace of Christ. You know, Anna, when you're speaking, just reminds me of the other script that says, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And I think what oftentimes that we need to recognize is God wants to communicate with us. God wants to speak with us. He wants to give us wisdom and he wants to give us revelation. And that comes even when there's storms, even things like we know, and I think we say this over and over again here on Hope Today, but we know the world is growing darker and it's going to continue to get dark. But we know that we have a Father in heaven that through Jesus Christ and through the power of the Holy Spirit, that there has been moments in my lives where there's storms are raging around me. And all I do is I just get quiet and I get still before the Lord. I sit in my prayer closet and I don't move until God, you're going to speak to me, that God, you're going to show something to me. God, you're going to just help me to see what you're doing in the midst of it. And we just encourage that for you today that that's what God wants to do. He wants to be in a relationship where he reveals his revelation to you so that you hold on to that wisdom, you hold on to that word of truth so you can walk through the day or you see what's happening on the news. And then you know what? That we can go out and say and encourage someone else. You know, the greatest thing is that we have is Christ, that he laid his life down for us, that he died and rose again. And it's not something we just hoard for ourselves, but it's something that we give away, that we share the good news of the gospel to a lost, a dying and a hurting world. So we just want to encourage you today. You know, maybe if you are walking through a whole hard time, you know, we're always available. We have our prayer line at 888-665-4483. But also go share the goodness of his grace to somebody who desperately needs it in our world today, Anna. Yes, the point of grace, God's unmerited favor poured out on you. The apostle Paul had a thorn in his flesh and he pleaded with the Lord three times to take it away. And God said to him, my grace is sufficient for you. For in your weakness, my power is made perfect. Today, friend, God's power is made perfect in your weakness. So hold fast to him. Lift up your eyes on him and everything else will fall in place. Have a good one. On tomorrow's Hope Today, do you ever feel like you're missing something in your spiritual life? Worship leader and author Aaron Williams explores practical ways that will help you relate to God wholly and transform your relationship with Him. Don't miss tomorrow's Hope Today. Cornerstone Television wishes to thank all our faithful viewers whose consistent prayers and financial support have made this program possible.